Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. There's a story on the internet that many people are talking about. A woman in Canada has won the lottery and she chose $1,000 a week payment for the rest of her life over a million dollar jackpot. And everyone is wondering why would she take the weekly payments instead of the lump sum million dollars? Wouldn't the lump sum have been better? The internet was so uniform on the response, I almost thought it was a fake story. But no, I checked many news outlets and this is a real story. And in fact, you can check the official lottery website. A young woman in her 20s wins $1,000 a week for life. A woman, Brenda, chose between receiving the $1,000 a week for life annuity or the $1 million lump sum prize. She opted for the annuity, which she will receive for the rest of her days. Also, just as a very small footnote, this is in Canada. So a Canadian dollar is currently worth about 0.73 United States dollars. I congratulate Brenda on winning the lottery and for making whatever choice she thought was best for herself. Mind your decisions. But I thought this was a wonderful situation because it presents itself as a real world math problem. So let's say on the one hand, you have a choice of a million dollar lump sum payout versus $1,000 weekly for life. There are several situations of this Canadian lottery that make it perfect for mathematical analysis. First of all, there is no tax on lottery winnings in Canada. So we don't have to worry about marginal tax rates being more on the lump sum versus on a weekly payment for life. Secondly, if you can earn 5.2% on the lump sum, then your interest is going to be $52,000 a year or about $1,000 a week. So many people instantly think it's going to be better to take the lump sum. But there's a hitch to this weekly payment for life. You are guaranteed 20 years of payments to you or an heir. Now there is risk involved of taking 20 years of payments because private lottery corporations have been known to go bankrupt. But in this situation, we have an interesting fact. Lotto Quebec is a crown corporation. So it's backed by the government and you can have as much confidence as you can that they're going to make these payments. So let's first calculate the nominal amount of money that a winner would get. 20 years times 52 weeks times $1,000 per week works out to $1,040,000. So notice you are getting at least a million dollars in either case guaranteed. Furthermore, a woman in her 20s can expect more payments. A 20 year old, let's say, will expect 65 years of living. So how much money would you get in that case? It'd be 65 years times 52 weeks times $1,000, which works out to 3,380,000. So now it's looking like a stronger case to take the $1,000 weekly payments for life. You could end up with three times as much money. But wait a minute. You can't compare the nominal amount of $3.38 million spread out over 65 years to a lump sum of a million dollars that's given to you now. You have to take into account the payments are coming later. It's an important concept. In order to make a proper comparison, you want to use a concept known as the time value of money. This is one of the most important calculations done in finance. Just to give you an example of the time value of money, one application is whether you're going to lease equipment versus buying it. If you make the right decision, you end up spending less money. If instead, like the city of Chicago, who sold off their parking meter deal to a private corporation, it will haunt your city's finances 16 years later. Another example is in acquisitions of companies. When Netflix put in a bid to acquire Warner Brothers and you had a value of $82.7 billion, an equity value of $72 billion, you better believe somebody was doing some present value calculations in coming up with those numbers. The time value money is also important in saving for retirement because you have to save enough money at a high enough investment rate that's safe so that you have a nest egg in the future. And unfortunately, many people don't do the right calculation. But the time value of money is an extremely simple concept. Let me explain it to you in a nutshell. Let's say you have $100 today. How much would that money be worth a year from now? So let's take a look at one year from now and say that you can invest this $100 at a 5% guaranteed rate. How much would this investment be worth in one year, excluding any taxes or any other situations? 
We just take $100, multiply it by one plus the interest rate of 5%, and we end up with $105. So $100 now is worth $105 a year from now. If we were to look one more year into the future, we would multiply it by the same rate of 5%. We take one more factor we're multiplying it by, and we would end up with $110.25. This is known as a future value of the money two years from now, and it's equivalent to the $100 at the present. We can also work in reverse. Let's say two years from now, we have a payment of $110.25, and we wanna know what's the present value of this money. Well, going one year back at a 5% interest rate, we would multiply this by one divided by one plus 5%, to get to 105. And if we wanted to go to the present day, we take one more factor and we end up with $100. So we have a present value of $100 for a future payment of 110.25. This allows us to look at the present value and compare apples to apples. So we're not comparing a stream of payments, we're just comparing the present value versus the present value. So let's do a present value calculation of this lottery. How much would weekly payments of $1,000 for life be worth currently? We have to make some assumptions. So let's say you're in your 20s. You can reasonably expect to live 65 years. That is an assumption. We can, of course, change the numbers. But we'll start out with some baseline value. Let's say we can also invest at a guaranteed 5% interest rate. So what is the present value of all of these payments? So we have our information, a $1,000 weekly payment for 65 years, and we have a 5% annual interest rate. Now, how many weekly payments will we be getting? We have 52 weeks in a year, so 65 times 52 is 3,380 weekly payments. So we need to divide this interest rate by 52 so that we get a weekly interest rate. So now let's look at our payments. In week one, we are going to get a payment of $1,000. In week two, we get the same payment. In week three, we get the same payment. And this continues all the way up to week 3,380, we get $1,000. So now let us look at the present value of each of these payments. In the first week, we would just need to multiply by one over one plus i. Then in the second week, we would take this factor and square it. In the third week, we would take this factor and multiply it by one over one plus i. So we have one over one plus i to the power of three. And for the final payment, we would need to deflate it where we have an exponent in the denominator of 3,380. So now the present value of this lottery payment will be the sum of all these values. So now this looks like a complicated calculation but it's related to something you've already learned in math class. This is the sum of a geometric series. I want all the students who said, when are we ever gonna use this to stand up right now and say, oh, it looks like this is a useful calculation. So we go ahead and take a common ratio of one over one plus i. We have a first term of r over one plus i, and the sum of this finite geometric series will be r over one plus i times a numerator of one minus the quantity one plus i raised to the exponent of minus 3,380 divided by this denominator of one minus the quantity one plus i raised to the power of negative one. We can now simplify this denominator by distributing the factor of one plus i and the denominator is going to simplify to be i. So we now have a single formula and all we need to do is substitute in the values for these variables. We have weekly payments R of $1,000, and we have a weekly interest rate of 5% divided by 52. Substituting those numbers in, we get a present value of 999,612. And you'll notice this is actually very close to a million dollars. So weekly payments of $1,000 for 65 years is actually going to be very close to a present value of a million dollars. However, this is assuming a 5% annual interest rate. We can change these numbers. What would happen if we take an 8% interest rate because the stock market long-term has often averaged eight to 
In that case, the present value would diminish significantly and it would be worth only $646,400. So you can see the present value is significantly less than a million dollars. So with this information in hand, let us revisit the decision of the lump sum versus the annuity of the lottery. So here is the information we have. And I think many people would say that you should take the lump sum. Responsibly investing a million dollar lump sum can earn a lot more money. When you have a million dollars, there's just a lot more you can do. You won't be liquidity constrained. You can put a down payment on a home. There is a flip side that many people might suddenly come out of the woodworks and ask you for money. So while this is probably the better choice financially, it doesn't always work out for lottery winners. Some people end up just irresponsibly investing it or spending it, and they just end up giving too much money to all their friends and relatives. So this doesn't work out. So I think given that the present value of $8,000 weekly for life can work out to nearly the same amount as the lump sum, it's not as big a decision as everyone is saying that it's so clear cut that you should take the lump sum. I think personally, I would take the lump sum, but Brenda, I hope somebody did this calculation and she looked at it before she made up her mind about what to do. Personal finance is certainly more personal than finance sometimes, but it is always good to look at the numbers just to have a reference point. So while Brenda may have taken the annuity payments that many people would not have done themselves, I want to conclude the video on an example where an annuity payment and deferred payments can end up working out. And this is one of the most famous contracts in all of sports known as the Bobby Bonilla contract. Here's another real world application of the present value concept. So every July 1st from 2011 to 2035, that's for 25 years, the retired baseball player Bobby Bonilla gets paid over $1 million by the New York Mets. This has been commemorated as a day across the internet that a player who is retired is still getting a million dollar payment every year. So how could this possibly have actually come about? So here's the situation. In the year 2000, he was an active player and the New York Mets owed him $5.9 million remaining on his contract. Rather than pay him directly, his agent, Dennis Gilbert, who was an insurance agent, came up with a proposed annuity scheme with deferred payments from 2011 to 2035, and he used an interest rate annually of 8%. And this is one of the most amazing things. We're actually going to replicate his calculation for the contract. So let's say we start in 2011, which will be 11 years later after 2000. So he's going to end up with some payment R. In 2012, he's going to end up with that same payment R, and this is going to continue all the way to 2035. He's going to get the same payment R. We are going to solve for this value R. So we are going to look at the present value of all of these payments. We are going to discount the first value. This will be an exponent of 11 in the denominator. In the 2012 calculation, we raise the exponent by one, and this is going to continue all the way to 2035. So now, once again, we have a sum of a geometric series, and that will be the present value of all of these payments. So we go ahead and apply our formula from before. So we need the present value of all of these payments to equal the amount remaining on the contract, which is $5.9 million. So set this equal to $5.9 million. We have an interest rate of 8%, which we can substitute into the formula. All that remains is to solve for R, and rounded to the nearest penny, we get that R is equal to $1,193,248.20. And here's the amazing thing. If you look at Bobby Bonilla's contract reported in the news, this is exactly the amount to the cent that he is paid every July 1st. So this is proof positive that things you learn on YouTube or in math class can actually be used in multi-million dollar contract negotiations. And as they say, the rest is history. Every July 1st is colloquially known as Bobby Bonilla Day. Every July 1st from 2011 to 2035, the New York Mets pay Bobby Bonilla, a retired player, about $1.19 million. So instead of just paying him off $5.9 million, 
they end up owing him about $30 million. And everybody would universally agree they'd rather take the $30 million of payments. So why did the Mets even do this? The contract is also a cautionary tale about relying too much on the numbers. At the time in the year 2000, the Mets were earning consistent returns of 15% annually from the owner's friend Bernie Madoff. So they thought if they were paying out at an 8% interest rate, this was a great deal that they could defer the payments, invest the difference, and actually go ahead and make a ton of money. Unfortunately, it was later exposed in 2008 that Bernie Madoff was the largest known Ponzi scheme in existence. So I hope this video illustrated the importance of the time value of money and whether you win the lottery or make some other multi-million dollar contract, you'll be ready to run the numbers and make the right decision. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.